Tim Bradley explains why he's picking Terrence Crawford over Errol Spence. That's what I want to talk about in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Let me jump right into it. SLC, subscribe, like, and comment. Now, Tim Bradley, I seen a quick interview where he broke down why he's picking Terrence Crawford. Now, I got to be very transparent on my channel that I built from the ground up with you wonderful people. Tim Bradley by far his breakdown of this particular fight I'm not saying in general but really this particular fight is highly confusing to me i think terence crawford he keeps saying and sounding confident like he's confidently picking crawford to win and he said it from the beginning my money's on crawford money's on crawford money's on crawford but then as he goes to break it down it really it doesn't sound as confident and to me there's a discrepancy with that like men lie women lie numbers don't and i don't judge people by their words but more so their actions so you know all in all it doesn't sound like brett like the words that are coming out of his mouth are sounding like he's picking terrence crawford and he's firm and comfortable on that but then as he illustrates it and when he's doing the actual part of you know, anybody, it's like a science fair project. Anybody can have a hypothesis. You know, you can have a thesis and what you believe to be the case. Like, oh, this plant under, you know, neon lights will do X, Y, and Z. That's your hypothesis. That's what you think will happen. But then you run the experiment and you determine if that hypothesis was what the results showed, right? And that's the great thing about boxing is the crowd can't fight for you these fight predictions can't fight for you so at the end of the day we're gonna find out what it is if and when spence crawford fight and it looks it looks likely you know what i'm saying so i'm happy for that reason very happy but back to timothy bradley's breakdown he keeps saying he's picking crawford and he sounds confident in saying that and he keeps saying it every time media asks him about it but then if you go watch this video link is in the description it's not long you guys can watch it in a quick sitting he says i'm picking crawford you know why and then when he goes to talk why he spends the first 45 seconds and it's only the interview is only like a minute 40 right and he's spending the first 40 so the 15 seconds is the question and and i'm just you know paraphrasing but let's say the first 15 seconds is the reporter asking the question about the fight. And then he says, I'm picking Terrence Crawford. But then you listen to what he's saying. The, the first 45 seconds of, of a minute and 40 long interview, he's talking about Errol Spence's strengths. And this is not the first time that he's done that. So to me, it sounds like, see, the great thing about YouTube, and I love it. I love this platform. If you ever hear me say something, it's with the utmost confidence because I don't put out stuff that I don't believe. Like when it comes to people overcomplicate for a variety of reasons, which I won't get into every single one of them, maybe favoritism or friendships or, you know, inherent biases or whatever. But for me, the great thing is this, if I'm going to go through the trouble of doing anything, I'm going to do the best job that I can. So if I'm giving a fight prediction, I'm going to do the best job I can and give it to you raw give you guys that uncut that puro another reason you guys should subscribe to the channel in the last 30 days i looked at my youtube analytics and it showed me something 50 percent of the people that watch my content for free on youtube subscribe the other 50 percent did not you guys can change that right here and now by subscribing it takes a few seconds slc subscribe like and comment and it goes a long way because other people are looking for the very content that you stumbled on that you clicked on that you're listening to me right now and they can't find the video because of you so reach one teach one if you've been entertained or you find value on the channel then hit the like button tim bradley all in all it just doesn't sound confident because the speech and the breakdown is not really matching what he's saying like if you're gonna say pick crawford that's fine pick crawford and then break down Crawford. It, but he, this is not the first interview, like I said, where I've seen this. And you guys can check the interviews from Tim Bradley that are available on the net, and you'll see the same patterns that I'm talking about. He says, oh, I'm picking Crawford. Oh yeah, Crawford all day. And it sound, that part sounds confident. But then he's spending all this time in this minute long interview, minute 40 interview, he started saying, 
while he's trying to explain he said oh anybody can win the fight 50 50 fight pick them fight and i'm just paraphrasing you guys can go to the link and watch it yourself and then he starts saying about how errol spence is the best in the in the game of boxing at basics and fundamentals and he said he's gonna be he's a vicious body puncher you know basically what you know about errol his jab is there and he said he's the most gifted or he has the best basics in boxing so if you're given a fight prediction and you're saying a guy is big and strong and we know errol spence is bigger and you're saying he has the best basics in boxing that that's a hell of a statement and it's it sounds surprising that the next couple of things you say go against picking that same guy you know what i'm saying so to me that just sounds weird because in boxing if someone has speed right you can negate speed with basics you can negate speed with timing so if you're saying that a guy has the best basics in all of boxing which is a hell of a statement when we have guys like in a way who's vicious right canelo alvarez pretty good fighter then you know bevel and all these other guys that have basics and you know the ability to box and fight you're saying he has the best basics in all of boxing but then you're picking against him you know sounds a little weird to me and then what he's saying the game plan he's saying oh crawford has faster feet when does crawford really use his feet in terms of planning his attack like i'm not saying there's no element of footwork but from what i've seen, i don't know maybe we just watch different things but when i see crawford i see an aggressive guy who's in pocket even with shakur stevenson more or less kind of the same shakur stevenson likes to trade like he's fighting a dangerous fight with oscar valdez and he's skilled enough to do it and his defense is on part and on par par to do it but shakur likes to mix it and that's definitely with Crawford, if even more so maybe with Crawford. You know what I'm saying? And I, I would say Shakur's defense looks less leaky, you know, than Crawford necessarily at 147 because we haven't seen Shakur get rocked up and like hurt like we've seen Terrence Crawford get dropped by Mean Machine. So Crawford, he fights a high risk, high reward scenario style of fight where he's right there in the picture and he wants to bang with you and trade with you and you're saying errol spence has the basics so to me it seems like that could spell trouble if if that's what your your prediction is you're saying that he's he's gonna beat him because of basically speed athleticism footwork and counter punching now i do agree like crawford's he's great with like he, he has a kill switch we know that he's an animal he's a dog but you're saying that some of the stuff that can be resolved from boxing basics i don't know i just never i don't recall a person giving somebody like the reason i'm picking floyd mayweather when i picked floyd over pacquiao is because floyd is fundamentally sound you know he's the better overall fighter so if you say a guy's the the best has the best basics and consistently uses them jab and best basics and rip into the body and that kind of thing and in the previous interview tim bradley said that that Errol Spence is the most technical or the more technical of the two, it's weird to see somebody pick against that because we know skills pay the bills and styles make the fights. So I just feel like the breakdown doesn't match with the rest of what's being said. Like it would be better to me, it would make more sense if you said I'm picking Terrence Crawford because I think he has the better fundamentals. You know what I'm saying? Because I understand styles make fights, but at the end of the day, if you got two sharpshooters, and one's bigger and then one has better fundamentals per your own admission how do you pick against that to pick the guy who has like you know maybe a little more pizzazz or spice or a bit faster you know what i'm saying I, I don't know to, to me that doesn't the the actual breakdown doesn't match and support and corroborate who you're picking you know so i can't really quite wrap my head around that aspect of tim bradley's his assessment and it would really make sense if you if if one like see styles make fights so if one guy is is spicy and has athleticism and some basics you know then that person like let's say terrence crawford versus ray beltran yeah of course he's gonna beat someone like ray beltran because ray beltran is one dimensional but then when you're talking about errol spence and you're saying he's the king of the basics and fundamentals and he's more technical and he's bigger and he has more experience at that weight 
I don't see, I don't understand the justification. So again, I know people are going to take this the wrong way. I don't really care. I'm here to give you my honest thoughts. The thing is the, the biggest thing I have is Tim Bradley. It's not that you're picking who you're picking. You could pick, it's a free country, pick who you want to pick, but the supporting argument, it's just like writing a paper. If you make a statement in your paper in the intro and what you said to prove, then you have the whole body to prove what you're saying and then you have your conclusion but when tim bradley is is picking this fight i guess you could say errol spence and terrence crawford it's it's kind of like an intro and a conclusion he's the intros i'm picking crawford and the conclusion is that's why i'm picking crawford but the body of work and what you're illustrating why you're picking who you're picking that part doesn't really resonate or add up to me you know, I'm not going to pick against skill. If, if I say a guy is, is more skilled, then I'll seldom pick against that, especially if they have more belts, especially if they have, you know, the size advantage and the power advantage and, and possibly the durability advantage. You know what I'm saying? But to each his own. Bradley, you know, he's, he's standing by his pick. So that's fine. You know, we'll see if they fight. I hope they fight. I need to see it because there's so many different ways to break down this fight. Let me know what you guys think. If you understand what I'm saying in this, this video, definitely let me know in the comment section. If you don't, maybe I'll make a follow up video where I can express it in a different way or different terms. But, you know, it's a lot of praise. He's saying anybody can win the fight. Errol Spence is the most technical and the best fundamentals and basics in boxing. I mean, that's what boxing is like when i look at canelo alvarez canelo's a good fighter you know some great fighter whatever bevo beat him with basics he was bigger in basics it, like that's basically what happened it's not that canelo sucks canelo was trying to melt you know melt um bevo but the the biggest takeaways from canelo versus bevo from what i've seen is bevo stuck to the script he didn't derive from a working game plan he was bigger he looked bigger and he was bigger using the basics do you see what i'm saying and i could think of more examples of that where if a person's bigger like even like you look at tyson fury versus wilder okay wilder has crazy power but tyson fury was bigger with boxing basics and then he won the fight you know what i'm saying so it's to me based on the illustration and the actual examples given it sounds unique that tim bradley would side not with the basics and the guy you think that's more technical but the guy you think is more cunning and and like swifter or whatever in terms of um you know he has that guile that's just to me that's a bit more rare unless if we're talking about the sweet science unless we're talking about a stylistic matchup where the guy with the basics happens to be maybe one dimensional you know what i'm saying like if we're talking about ruslan provotnikov versus chris algeri you know what i mean like he almost knocked out chris algeri and it was a close fight they they gave it to chris algeri but chris algeri using the basics he was able to skate by and get away from that fight you know, same thing with Bradley versus Ruslan Provotnikov. Bradley fought a, a foolish game plan. He almost got knocked out by Ruslan Provotnikov, and it was the basics that brought him back. So it's pretty interesting to see Bradley go not side with what he's saying is the most fundamentally sound guy, but to to pick the guy who's who has more panache and pizzazz. But again, to each his own. Make the fight so I can see it. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. And I'm introducing super thanks right here on the official boxing ego youtube super thanks allows you the viewers to show a little bit of extra gratitude which enables me as a full-time content creator to push out the content you need in the world of boxing underneath all the videos you will see a heart with the dollar sign in it you can enter any amount that you find suitable as a super thanks a brand new interactive and colorful way to get your comments highlighted and noticed by not only myself but other people on the youtube platform super thanks a unique and cool way to show and applaud us full-time content creators hopefully you guys enjoy the content super thanks the future is now the hibernation fives by kanichi bear hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones out of the box you can connect to any console or pc bluetooth ready with a low latency usb adapter 
color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.